found within the intensity of those flames, realize the names and faces revolve and they change. Their need for gain and constant fame still persists. Take note, the remains. Your hood, my hood, it's all the same. The he, nah, she, becomes the reflection of we. Chopped and Scrooge, come. Let's see. I continue. A self quote from a video that I presented July the 25th, 2023, the title, You. This is what I said. That's funny, I'm, I'm citing myself. There are perpetrators of these actions among us who feel the need to flaunt their self-appointed genius. And more often their activities are no longer hidden within societies. And then I wrote this word, it speaks to nefarium or nefarious workings around us. I continue, Scrooge, a bitter wealthy business owner, albeit miserly, full of contradictions and trauma, yet the novel character titan of its time. I continue, take it from the pages of A Christmas Carol, a Charles Dickens classic offering written in 1851. I continue, a Christmas morning that began at 1 a.m., the late of Christmas Eve, one that old Ebe Ebenezer Scrooge will remember for always. To inspire, teach, and for observational purposes only, esoteric in nature. This will not resonate for all, but I marked it, general audience, though triggers abound. Allow me to take you on this astral journey. But first, a song. And it goes like this. Yeah, this album is dedicated to all the teachers that told me I'd never amount to nothing. To all the people that lived above the building that I was hustling in front of. Called the police on me when I was just trying to make some money to feed my daughter. It's all good. And all the triggers in the struggle, you know what I'm saying. It's all good. Baby, baby, it was all a dream. Ha! Juicy indeed. Thanks, the notorious B I G. I continue. The main character, Scrooge, the wealthy aristocrat of his time, miserly, bitter, self serving micromanager would best describe this individual better known as Scrooge. This Christmas Carol as it is known to be speaks to a life of early deep-seated traumas, loss, a me against the world mentality no matter its casualties along the way. It begins with a Jacob Marley, once a business partner of Scrooge. Seven years now expired. He's already passed on. Seven years ago, but here he is at the bedside of Scrooge. He explains that if he doesn't change his ways of greed for gain and material wealth, at his death, he will awaken bound in chains and made to walk the earth. He goes on to say, he will be visited by three spirits, the first to come at 1 a.m. These are the bullet points I wrote next. First, the ghost of Christmas past. Next, the ghost of Christmas present. Next, the ghost of Christmas yet to come. Let's attempt to break some of these revelations down. And it begins like this. The ghost of Christmas past. Scrooge is found at school, feeling unwanted, unloved, as his mother died while giving birth to him. His father may have revealed some animosity 
about this very thing. And this is what I wrote next because I saw it as I was writing it down. Classmates scolding and chiding him. And th this is the words I wrote. Nah, 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 nah. He don't have a mother. And that's what I was seeing as I was writing this down. Next. His sister. I'm going to leave sidebar. I won't be naming a lot of names. There's a lot of names and I don't want to confuse. I just want you to kind of follow the main narrative that I'm giving. But next, Scrooge's sister. His sister was the voice of solace and reason. And she now arrives at the school to retrieve him. And she says his father's views have changed regarding the situation that he feels unloved about. Next, the ghost of Christmas past shows him at a Christmas party and he's now proposing to his fiance, Alice, and she also accepts. Next, his trusted voice of reason, his sister, passed away, also while giving birth to his nephew Fred he missed her last words in which she requested that she watch over Fred next he now joins forces with Jacob Marley this figure that was at his bedside again this is the ghost of Christmas past he now joins forces with Jacob Marley at a new company owned by Mr. Jerkin Next, Mr. Jerkin is found to have embezzled funds at this actual company, causing it to bankrupt. Scrooge and this Jacob Marley decides to replace the funds on the premise that they now have controlling interest at the company. Next, Alice, his former fiance, Alice Scrooge, his fiance, breaks off the engagement due to his spiritual practice and dedication to a golden idol. I won't touch it. I'm not going to touch it. But I'm thinking the density was different than what she was used to. <laughs> I'm moving forward. Marley, he's now on his deathbed. Here he warns Scrooge to change his ways. The spirit now scolds Scrooge. Again, the ghost of Christmas past now scolds uh, Scrooge for taking Marley's house and taking all his money. And this is what I wrote under that sidebar. Something his family could have appreciated and you. Next we have the ghost of Christmas present. And it goes like this. The spirit shows the light-hearted Christmas celebrations of different groupings of people, including Scrooge's employee, Bob Cratchit, who has a disabled son, and that son's name is Tiny Tim. He asks the spirit, will the child survive? And the spirit's response was this, unless the future changes. Mm. Next, now the spirit takes Scrooge to his nephew's house, where he finds him defending his character to guests that are super critical of him. How ironic I wrote, because it was Scrooge himself that did not want Fred his nephew to even marry. And that was probably due to the trauma of losing his mom and now his sister at, birth, at the birth of a child. I continue. The spirit and Scrooge go to see now a much older Alice, his former fiance, where at a homeless shelter, she ministers to the less for fortunate. And here, the spirit chides Scrooge for 
trying to show some empathy here. The spirit says, no, you would say something like, are there no prisons? <laughs> are there no workhouses? And then I wrote on the side, you know anybody like that? <laughs> Finally, we come to the ghost of Christmas yet to come. We see his employee, Bob Cratchit, now mourning the loss of his son, Tiny Tim. We see Scrooge, his cleaning lady and others selling off possessions of a dead man. We also see two businessmen now discussing funeral arrangements. Suddenly, the dead man's gravestone can now be seen bearing the name Ebenezer Scrooge. Scrooge immediately asks the spirit for a second chance. He now awakens in his bed, realizing it's Christmas morning and that he has, he still has the opportunity to amend his ways. An about face, if you will, I wrote. And then I wrote a scripture and it reads, I shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. Taken from Psalm 118 and 17. I'm about to close here. Sidebar. To the very businesses that you see in this video, this video, sidebar, this video for me was an illustration of what I was seeing in this story. Um, but I went on to uh, include different businesses because it doesn't actually say the business that Scrooge was in. But these are the businesses that came to mind that you'll see in a couple of seconds why I put them down. I continue. To the various businesses listed in the video, who or what are running these businesses? Fronts? Question mark or enterprise conglomerates? And for what purpose, other than a vehicle to absorb, flush, or clean ill-gotten gain, or simply to grow said conglomerate? And then I wrote, the eyes of the Lord are beholding. I continue, just in case it doesn't make sense to you, this is what I wrote. The business, barbershops, beauty salons, escorts, security. But the funny thing, as I was writing security, I put hit squad. Hmm, I continue. Insurance machinations. Hmm, doing funny stuff with insurance. Hmm, I'm just giving y'all the video. I'm just giving y'all what I got. Investment fraud, I wrote. Housing fraud, I wrote. I continue. Let's come to the conclusion. This is what I have. The Almighty, the Most High, has seen and heard and recorded enough. A determination can now be made on the matter of where we stand with Sob, with Him. The clarion call of this should shake and awaken us to prompt change. No one is exempt here. And for some, even at this writing, I write next these words, to now be relegated to your own visitations, aberrations, visions, and dreams, paranormal activities in nature. One would think enough to bring shivers down one's spine, resulting in immediate and imminent change. This change must be heartfelt not fear-based. Remember, baby steps. But it begins with you. Ashe. This has been Charles. We are HypeCentral.org. As always, your time is appreciated and be blessed this holiday season.